Hey, hi, hi again. I'm in a wave back wave. Wave. Yeah, so, um, anyway, I've done a lot of talking and um, maybe I can just do some like quick fire answers but if you guys are gonna ask me like hella deep questions it, it, you're gonna you're gonna get those like lengthy like 10 minute answers from me so um I'm drinking I'm drinking a black tea with almond milk and um, I put um m lion's mane mushroom powder in it hi Monty um, and yeah the lion's mane is for like uh, improved cognitive function so I'm trying to like improve my memory also I find that like when I'm when I'm taking lion's mane that I don't struggle so much with finishing my sentences um, I just yeah I just noticed that sometimes I'll be in the train of thought and go what's that word again what's that word again and I'll be stuck for like 10 seconds trying to remember um, so anyway lion's mane is, is something I'm taking in my black tea at the moment not a deep question, but what do I think of Haley's solo music? I think it's cool. She's definitely owning um, her individuality. And it definitely sounds to me like she's making the music for her, which is really, really cool and admirable. I mean, after like four or five plus records, um, you know, under one project, like it's pretty far out. And I imagine that she would really be excited to like break break free and break out and experiment and it sounds like she's done that which I think is the best thing any artist can do so I really admire that I also really like transparency in lyrics <laughs> um, if lyrics aren't there for me I just don't connect I'm not connecting you know people aren't telling a story if it's not coming from a real place I just I kind of disregarded it to a certain extent. It just doesn't, I guess it just doesn't connect with me. So yeah, I, I really appreciate, I really appreciate like depth of like a story and um, a message. I'm very much a message person. I'm looking for the meaning behind everything. I have heard of Kundalini Yoga and it's something I wanted to get into this year. I haven't done that yet, um, but I'm curious. I'm very curious about it. Let me just scroll back a little bit. You've been skipping meals and you're afraid that no one will love you if you eat. I'm afraid of gaining weight. I keep purging, but I don't know how to open up to my mum. Angel, that's so intense. It's a really yeah, confronting and distressing place to be. Um, it definitely needs to be talked about. Um, you know, if your mum feels like someone... I guess I won't go down that path. I'll say that you need to find someone that you feel safe talking to someone that it's like is very much you're just going to be held in your truth and um that's not always available to all of us I know that I kind of felt like that wasn't there for me like if, until a few years ago to be able to like speak so candidly and about such a raw and intense topic that you kind of feel like not everyone's gonna understand it's really really scary but you need to let people hold space for you and if your mum is going to be that person then that's really really fantastic because she's She's a wonderful resource. Um, if you're afraid to tell her because you don't think she'll understand or she won't approve or whatever, maybe someone else. You know, telling a secret. Oh my God, I gotta read. I have to read a quote to you about telling a secret. Like part of the healing process is sharing something that you haven't shared before. And that is really, really cool. So if you don't mind, it'll take me a second to pull up, but I'm just gonna grab my computer. <clears throat> so talk amongst yourselves. We're going to keep talking about this, Beth. Like, thank you for being so transparent. Um, it's really scary, but the fact that you're the fact that you're bringing it up now tells me that you're like ready to you're ready to unpack it. So I was sharing a little bit from this book the other night um, with um, women who run with the wolves. It took me a year to read this book. Like, it's it seems tiny, but like it's intense. It's like a super super dense, potent excuse me, potent book. Um, super super life changing I wrote all these quotes out from it so I'm just going to pull up the part about telling secrets and like how healing that can be I'll be back with you in a second alright <clears throat> I'll read you a few quotes alright uh, I, hope, I hope you're here for the <laughs> 
Oh, shit. Oh, we're all good. Still happening. Let me just wipe, wipe the phone. I love that you guys now get to experience how clumsy I am. You're actually like just standing up against some um, PlayStation games right now. I've got a really professional setup. All right, secrets. Where there is a shaming secret, there is always a dead zone in the woman's psyche. A place that does not feel or respond properly to her own continuing emotional life events or the emotional life events of others. Since the secret is greatly compensatory, the secret will find its way out anyway, if not in actual words, then in the form of sudden melancholias, intermittent and mysterious rages, all sorts of physical tics, talks, pains, dangling conversations that end suddenly without explanation and sudden odd reactions to movies, films, and even television commercials. Shameful secrets cause a person to become haunted. They must be witnessed by compassionate humans under generous conditions. The way to change a tragic drama back into a heroic one is to open the secret, speak of it to someone, and write another ending. The insistence on keeping a thing private is poison. In reality, it means that a woman has no support around her to deal with the issues that cause her the pain. The keeping of secrets interferes with the natural self-healing hygiene of psyche and spirit. So, of course, that applies to men as well. Oh, God, it's so dense and just, like, hits that just hits me because I think of like times that I've kept secrets and I haven't shared a truth because I was like, no one's going to be able to understand this. No one's going to be able to hold this with me or for me for a moment. So I totally understand what it's like. Um, and I've had, I've had ex similar experiences to what you're talking about in that message as well. Um, but there are other people on this thread right now that I know for a fact have seen the other side of where you are right now. And I'm one of them. And um, I guess I would start with, with learning how to express what the inner dialogue is for you. Like, what's the fear? What does, what's the limitation? Like, what is the hurt that you're experiencing? And how can you extract that from the internal world, put it in the external world, let it be seen, let it be aired out, let it be held by someone else, let it be dissected, let it be looked at from another perspective. Um, give yourself a chance to get better and it might take some time and that's totally okay. There is no rush to get better, but um, Yeah, we all love you anybody that this spoke to just know that like there are a lot of people here that care about you as well and as 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 much as you've heard it before you're not alone in what you're feeling as much as it might feel that way so I hope you reach out. I hope you start expressing that um, that internal pain. Give it a voice. Give it a chance. It wants to be heard. Actually, um, with like purging, something that I was told by a doctor that I was seeing at the time when I was purging, he said to me, um, you're rejecting something within yourself. You're not holding down, like, you're not, how did he word it? I guess I won't, I don't want to paraphrase. He said, you're rejecting something from inside yourself. So yeah, what are you shunning? Like, what are you putting to the side and saying like, I don't have time to work on this or it's too intense, it's too scary, it's too confronting, it's too heavy, it's too unfamiliar, it's too raw. Like, you have to start before you're ready. You have to, you have to lean in to what scares the hell out of you. Otherwise, it's always going to scare you. So I'm going to move on now. So what did everybody think of me dropping my phone and spilling my tea? And just like kind of moving on. Just dealing with it. <laughs> um, hmm. I, I think your name is Cammie Alive with an X. 
um, you want to go to therapy but you're so afraid. Is there anything I can say to you? Mm, I, I hope that what I said just previously to this um, spoke to you in that you have to do things just before you're ready. Don't wait until that need dismisses itself. I had a friend um, who said to me, when you're hungry, eat. And he wasn't talking about food. He was like, when there is a need for something, reach out and fulfill that need. Do not wait until you're starving and desperate, in which case you, when you're desperate, you'll take anything. You won't take what's actually needed, necessary, appropriate. Um, you'll take anything. And that's a dangerous place to be. And beyond starvation is, is the becoming comfortable with the starvation. Um, and that's also somewhere you don't want to be. So when you're hungry and you feel that tinkering, you feel that whisper, that like gentle tap on the shoulder of like, hey, we should probably talk about what's going on. Hey, we should probably deal with that thing that happened when we were 10 years old. Whatever it is, um, don't ignore that voice. Because that's you. The, that voice is actually you. And it's probably your higher self who's just got your best interests at heart. So I wrote down in my diary the other day, it's the ego that fears. It's not the higher self. It's not the true self. It's not the core you. It's actually the ego that's trying to protect you. So by being afraid and limiting yourself and stopping yourself from going to therapy, for instance, or from leaving a relationship or quitting a job or moving to another country or, go, yeah, like I said, going to therapy, <clears throat> that's actually ego saying, I don't know if I want to, like, relive that trauma. I don't, want to, I don't know if I want to, like, deal with all those feelings. I think it's too much. Let's just protect ourselves for the immediate future and say no. So that's probably more so what's going on than actual like a deep rational fear. I hope that's helpful. <clears throat> um, I, don't, I don't think I would do a house tour. I really appreciate you asking this. It's cute and I really love my house. It's a really cute little flat. It's, um, it's just my nest, you know. It's, it's got all my lamps and crystals and colorful things and it's got books and shit everywhere and food everywhere i have like three or four different um i have i have four different like fruit and veggie bowls that have like different things on them on the kitchen bench it's lemons and limes on the bookshelf it's like pears and apples and oranges and then there's a bowl of potatoes and sweet potatoes and then on top of the fridge it's like bananas and avocados and garlic and onion and ginger FYI. So now you've seen my whole house. I'm just I'm just trying to catch up with you guys. Drop my eyebrow routine, that's cute, Chloe. That's hilarious. Um yeah, no, I just used um Anastasia Beverly Hills like brow whiz pencil. Uh and I just pluck. And I just like trim the top. Um, I love how we like talk about therapy and like eating disorders and like talking to your child self and eyebrows and veganism. All the good stuff, guys. <clears throat> but thanks for the compliment. So I'll just, yeah, I'll just share once more that that book <clears throat> was Women Who Run With The Wolves. I'll just hold it up for you. I recommend it for anybody that's like wants to reconnect to the instinctual self if you have like a sense that there's a part of you that is not being utilized a part of you that has been like sanitized domesticated um shunned like made to be more appropriate more palatable more acceptable read this book because this is the most validating piece of literature I've ever read I feel so seen, so heard, so understood, so like vocalized just reading this book. It's so fucking epic. I can't say it enough. I will definitely share more um, quotes from it over time. Yay. Okay, so like I'm hella behind. I'm really sorry, but I'm going to do a big scroll so that I'm like in the present with you guys. I'm sorry that I've missed so many messages, but I talk a lot. It turns out I talk a shitload. Really sorry that there's probably going to be some really um, important little questions and messages in there that I'm missing. I hope, I hope that's chill. Oh, so someone said, can I draw a card? Your name's Jen. Hey, Jen. Jen is, um, 
<clears throat> Jen's like what only really like close friends and um, family call me. And I used to have this thing that when like strangers called me Jen, I was like, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> it was just like this private little like safe place name for me. Um, but now I actually introduce myself as Jen. So that's kind of been like healing. Um, I use that as like when I order food or like, yeah, just when I introduce myself to a neighbor or something, I just say Jen. It's kind of like, it's been kind of like healing to be like, uh, what's in a name? Hey, I don't grow food at home. Danny, thanks for asking, but I can't wait to grow food at home. I want to live on a block of land. I want to grow my own food. I want to build my own house. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to grow food and uh, grow it organic and it's going to be dope. Excuse me. I like Japanese sweet potatoes. I think they're taro. Taro? Is it? Maybe or maybe it's different. But yummy. Sweet potatoes are good. Hmm. Um, Mara, what's the background music called? It's just something that came up on YouTube. Um, it's called the butterfly effect. Elevate your vibration. Positive aura cleanse. <laughs> it's pretty cute. It's got butterflies on the screen and it's real nice. Um, I really don't want to um, ignore... And I'm trust me, I really am not deliberately ignoring anybody right now. But I did see a message what would I say to someone who's in a deep depression it's such a hard place to be um I don't know if you've ever heard Jim Carrey talk about depression it could be really really humanizing for you to hear I would also check out Ram Das teachings um I think when you're feeling depressed a helpful thing to do when it's when you feel like you're like okay I'm done with this like I've been in this long enough um, you need to look at ways to reframe where you are. Um, the reason I brought up Jim Carrey is because he says, and by the way, this is totally not something that I'm like authorized slash educated enough to really be talking about because there are really true leaders out there and educators with, with total like communities around their teachings and stuff like that. But all I can, all I can do is really just share what I know. So please don't take it as, as the end or be all. Um, it's just really going to be a fraction of, of, of what's available. Jim Carrey said, um, depression, deep, depressed to feel depressed is like to need deep rest. Um, I really like that concept and I won't break it down cause it's not my concept, um, to do that for, but, um, I guess I would look at like, what do you need? Really, really ask yourself like, what are my like innermost needs right now? And like, are they being met? Um, how can they be met? Like, what's missing for me? Like, how can I feel more nourished? Like, what do I want to feel in my life? Is, is the most basic thing you want to feel okay? Or is it neutral? Or is it soft? Or is it like stable? So, you know, just going like from a mind map point of view, it's like, what do I need to create those feelings? How can I create enough like consistency, stability, predictability in my life that that's going to be possible for me? Um, I hope that's helpful. I know it's like kind of basic, but often the best things are really, really simple. And maybe the reason that we prevent ourselves from moving on, prevent ourselves from healing or like pulling ourselves out of a deep depression is because it feels so intense, so complex that like it seems stupid that something that simple could help. Um, but it could just be like a really slow, gradual process of like each day feeling just a touch better. Maybe it's just each week, maybe it's each month, but like maybe <clears throat> I just love journaling so much. Uh, I wonder if you could do a weekly check-in. I do a daily, a weekly and a monthly check-in. So I can look at the fact that in, in, in uh, January or in February, I was feeling like on top of the world. And the very first sentence was something like, I'm like, I'm in it right now. And then, you know, two months later coming to now, the very first sentence of my monthly check-in was like, I'm really, really feeling the emotional and mental challenge of being in isolation at the moment. And just, just allowing the, like the inner voice to come out and to experience, um, in words, what you're feeling and what you're finding, you know, challenging to process, 
challenging to share like more on like sharing what's the secret like what is that um that inner truth that you're keeping hidden and that you're not letting light on um i hope that this is in some way like aligned with what you feel could be helpful for you um checking in with yourself let the inner voice speak let light onto you know those secrets reach out to people seek seek support I don't know how like people out there feel about therapy and counseling and I don't know how you like genuinely feel about that if it's like scary but hopefully um you know on what I was saying about fear is actually just a symptom of the ego it's something that is there to keep us safe but you know what is safe isn't necessarily what is going to be progressive for us and safe might literally mean just not stirring up the nervous system or not allowing a mood to arise and not and we're probably going to stop there probably going to stop there hope that's okay <laughs> ness you love that my whole house is four bowls of fruit that's like the only thing i told you about my place well i live with my partner and dale and he has a great record collection so we have like this station it's at the end of the bed there's a bookshelf with all um, my, my favorite books and his favorite records and it's got a salt lamp on it and he's got the record player and it's like a real mood station um, this it's like a two-bedroom flat so this is my room this is my studio where I um, you know I write my music I do my yoga practice in here um, I, I journal in here the other room is Dale's study. It's his little office where he does his work and his reading. And um, yeah, it's kind of sick. So I love it. I love having like a dedicated space to like my inner world, even though it's like an outer, exp you know, an outer expression of my inner world. But this is like my safe space. Um, maybe that it gives you a little bit more of an idea of my place that I live in. Um, I'm going to do a nice, little scroll here thanks for hanging out with me it's Sunday morning here so it's it's a nice chill time I was drinking you know tea until I spilt it I love Ocean Grove's new album has anybody else been listening to it I think it's amazing and um, it was so epic um, you know watching Dale go through that writing process and seeing him step into being um, the front man and using his voice to its full capacity. The first time that I saw Ocean Grove play, I just thought like, I need to hear more of that voice. And um, yeah, I'm so glad that he's front and center. Um, I think Dale's an amazing leader and um, role model and he's got a great story and message to share and that's something I really admire about him so I think it's really cool that you can have a band like Ocean Grove that's really um yeah really what am I trying to say like innovative um and exciting and like nostalgic and futuristic at the same time I just think it's epic music and I just love that um Dale's voice is fronting that and um really really speaking with substance and truth and it's hot I love how random you guys get you asked me punk panda great name do I believe in marriage I love the idea of like sacred union I love the idea of being committed to somebody and like building life with someone I don't know you know I think the idea of a contract is pretty cool like a sacred contract but like lawful stuff I don't know kind of I guess that's just the paradigm we live in that's just like the modern western world that we are we're born into I don't know how I feel about like that legally bound kind of thing I don't think that really serves the purpose of what I believe marriage is which is like a union of two people two souls who yeah come together to enhance each other's lives I don't really know that like a, a lawful contract is really necessary to validate that but um but I love the idea of being like committed to somebody
I want to get married one day. But probably not in a church and I probably just want to get have one of my friends become ordained and I want to do it under like a massive willow tree and barefoot wedding and stuff like I kind of imagine this is like this is so funny me talking about this as if you guys care but um I kind of want to have like a circle of um our people around us like our, our closest friends and family who like yeah you know during the ceremony they like infuse their love and support into the relationship and they're just like the keepers you know of the relationship that's kind of like how I envision marriage or you know getting married um I will save this live and I saved the last one just so you know I'm feeling more confident today than I was the other night I was kind of like what am I doing putting myself out there for me like being on the camera right now and talking to you guys so candidly um is like a practice of leaning into my fear this is me like doing something that's really scary for me um I think yeah when you're yeah I just find that when I'm in front of people I'm just like what are they thinking um I think of like all the possible judgments that anybody could have I just like yeah, I think there's a lot of fear around like being exposed and being transparent, but I kind of also feel that it's my medicine and it's my, um, it's my purpose to a degree. Um, you know, the other night when I was getting on to the live, I just, I had this feeling in me that's like, this is something you have to do. And I guess like writing songs and being on stage is something I have to do. It's like part of like why I'm here at all. So, um, yeah, I just love that, like, that it's a mutual experience in which, like, I'm, I'm, I'm exercising, like, courage and, 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 um, bravery, like, on, you know, on my, you know, this is courage and bravery for me, to an extent. So, it's really nice that I get to do that, and, and you guys are, like, holding space for that, and we're sharing, and it's an exchange. So, yeah. Thanks. Just reading your comments and messages again. Um, um, Dark Kokiri, would it be okay if I explained what Looking for Heaven is about? You love that song. Thank you so much. Looking for Heaven. I'm getting self conscious, sorry. I'm just going to fix my hair so I stop doing that. Looking for Heaven. I feel that that song was channeled. I actually feel that's one of the only songs that we've written that I consciously could tell that something was coming through me. Because what I was saying in the verses, which I kind of always seem to get the lyrics wrong. I've only, we've only performed this song once. And of course, you know, like I'm not listening to our record as much as you guys are. So I don't know, you know, I might get these words wrong, but breathe, be still, all is beautiful. Your needs, they will be met. We always get what we ask for, just not in the way we expect. Um, I might have mixed up a couple of those lines, but that was like a message that was coming through for me and it felt amazing because I was like, oh my God, I'm receiving guidance right now. I'm receiving a message. Like someone's telling me to call it and just, just surrender and accept and just be, um, I really felt like I was being spoken to when I was writing those lyrics. I don't think that they came from me. And then the, the chorus says, my eyes roll back inside my head. I bet you wonder what I see up there. Envision a place where I think I am. When I came back to, I said, I've been looking for heaven. I guess in a way that's like talking about meditation. It's like about going in and going up and like going into this like ec ecstatic state where you're like, you're actually in another world, but you're like within yourself and your eyes are closed. And when you come back to, I just imagine like, I imagine watching someone in that state and what it would be like trying to understand like where they went. You know, even when someone gets distracted in a conversation, you're kind of like, where are they? Where are they right now? Like what world did they go to? Because I'm certainly like, did the light change in here? I'm certainly like shifting. I'm just like, oh, I've gone to somewhere in the past or I've gone to that place in another city in another country or, um, anyway. So I just imagined like, what would it look like when you're, seeing someone have that experience of like ecstatic like internal 
union and oneness in self and like receiving guidance from your angels for instance or just from your higher self it's like I just feel like that's kind of a far out concept but it's real and it can happen and you can you can experience that daily you can experience that multiple times daily if you just put yourself in that um you just give yourself that opportunity and you hold that space for yourself so that's what that song's about I hope that um I hope that explained that um Luce what drew me to start live streaming um to an extent it was because I could not um I could not figure out what the hell to say you know, I really wanted to make a post. I've been in um, isolation for like seven weeks. And at the start of this, I was like, you know what? I really want to like reassure people everything is going to be okay. And like, I wanted to help reframe what was happening right now and say like, hey, let's not focus on what we can't do, but focus on what we can do. Let's not focus on what we always do. Let's focus on what we've never done. And um, I really wanted to help reframe this and offer a little bit of like support to people. But I just like could not verbalize and articulate what what I felt would like be helpful. And then I the more time that went on, um, I was like, oh, everyone's saying the same thing online. And I guess that kind of bothers me. Like I really want to offer something that's like unique and um, individual. And anyway... It just wasn't happening for me. I just didn't feel that I could address everyone in every circumstance in a sensitive way. And that's something that matters to me. Like, I really wanted to be able to speak to everyone. And, um, yeah, that kind of, like, isn't possible, realistically. And I have this fear that, like, you know, if I start talking about, like, hey, this is what's helping me at the moment. And then, you know, the fact that there are people who are broke and out of work and might be you know, people that are becoming homeless, people that are actually, like, sick with the virus, um, and then I think, you know, it just, it just goes so, like, it just starts going, like, too far out, um, for me to, like, be able to perceive what those experiences are like, and I can't speak to, I can't speak to what everyone's going through, so basically the reason I'm live streaming is because I just felt like this was the most authentic way to actually like be here and to connect with you rather than like thinking that you can say and encapsulate all of this in a post that's basically it so there's like a little bit of fear a little bit of laziness a little bit of practicality in the reason why I've decided to live stream instead of um make posts I have a little bit of like post anxiety with um yeah post anxiety with Instagram um, I'm, I'm getting like notifications down here in this like question, little question mark thing. I, I didn't notice this before. Cool. That's kind of cute. So you guys are like sending comments and sending me questions. <laughs> it's cool. So I've, I've, I've actually, I'm sorry, in that time that I was just talking a whole bunch, I've scrolled back to the present moment and I'm just back here with like what's coming in presently. I love you guys. Love you heaps. Thanks for all the love hearts. They're real cute. I love how they like bubble up and they're all rainbow colors. Thanks for all the yellow, the yellow love hearts. It's really cute. Is that for a reason? Did I miss something? Mm. Savannah, you said, uh, do I have any tips for increasing confidence or a start? Well, I guess once again, like, with developing confidence it's about reframing like how you see yourself and what you have to offer and just acknowledging that you are not who you are not what you look like you are not what you do you are not even what you say or where you come from um you are not what you're interested in you are an essence that um has an effect on people and if you just walk forward like with your heart leading the way, not your head, um, and you come from the heart and you're like, what can I... You don't even have to like consciously process what you're offering to the situation, but it's like, can you just be here? Um, can you hold space for others? Can you practice being impeccable with your word? Can you practice being honest and gentle with yourself and forgiving of yourself, forgiving of others? Um, can you develop confidence from that place of like, I'm more than what people are seeing right now. I am what people feel. Um, and that's what's helped me develop my confidence in that, like, I'm not how I look. I'm not how my voice sounds. I'm not how I dress. 
um, I am how I affect people. So value that and develop that. Um, and then everything else, like it shines, it shines out. It shines out from that place. So yeah, I, I hope that's helpful on developing confidence. I know it's not easy. I struggle with my confidence. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes like still shocked by like, damn, I thought I'd like come a long way with my self-esteem and still it like, it, it like, um, it catches me. It like snags me and pulls me back sometimes. And I'm like, why am I, yeah, where is this fear coming from? So like, I think, yeah, developing confidence is intrinsic with like healing, um, healing irrational beliefs about yourself as well, which is a really cool thing to um, keep in check. So I actually, from now on, uh, what am I trying to say? Now and again, I write down a list of my irrational beliefs. I'm starting to get a little bit, I'm starting to little get foggy right now. But writing down your irrational beliefs is really, really valuable because, again, you're like giving a voice to a secret. You're like putting light on something that was in the dark. And um, when I write my irrational beliefs, I, I then answer them with like what I actually believe to be true or what what I feel like a mentor would say to me or a higher self would say to me about, you know, what, how would you answer someone that says like, you know, if people get too close to me, they'll realize that I'm not actually special. That if I'm at a distance, then then um, they can keep me in that light, keep me on that pedestal. But if we get too close, they'll realize I'm not that special. It's like if you heard one of your friends or a family member saying that to you, you'd be like, whoa, 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 wait a fucking second. You're, you're, you being special is not a conditional thing. Um, so once again, yeah, developing confidence is kind of about uncovering like what's, what's like blocking your confidence in the first place. We got there. All right, dang, big, big. You guys like you like you drag some shit out of me. But I like it. Thanks for challenging me. I like, I like to be challenged. I like to challenge other people. Um, Aria, Aria. I don't know if your name's Aria. Um, it's you have a lovely name. I'm sorry, I won't be able to pronounce it properly. But you said, can I tell you one affirmation to read every day when you wake up? Um, sure. I have a little list here. I don't use these very often. Um, but I'll read you. I'll read you some. See if see if anything resonates with you. And ultimately, you'll probably it's probably best to like develop affirmations that like come from within you that are like really applicable to where you're at right now. So you can use affirmations to actually manifest and create a preferred reality preferred belief it's often something that you don't believe about yourself in the first place so one of my affirmations that I was using for quite a while was um I am capable and I am equipped where is that yeah I am equipped and I'm I am equipped and I am qualified it's on my mirror you can't see it from here but and the other one is I am a motivated individual I didn't feel that way at the time but you start like really creating that belief it's like a preferred belief preferred reality i am what the heck was it i am a motivated individual i am equipped and i am qualified like i said it's often something that you don't fully believe about yourself yet but it's a it's a life that you want to create so some of my um other ones here these are old as well i haven't used these for ages but i am fully aware of my potential and i strive to meet it now um, I'm grateful for the privilege that it is to be alive right now. Um, I approach every day with the same love I would offer a child. I transmute all doubt into the opportunity to love more. So those are a few examples um, of some affirmations that I've used in the past that um, yeah, you might dig. Um, spirit of Sav, do I ever use pendulums for divination? I have a pendulum. I've used it a few times. Um, I had some mentors that like, <clears throat> it kind of like opened my awareness to the fact that while there is light, there is also dark. Bye, Chloe. Take care. Thanks for being here. Um, and that you can have interference from, um, from darker forces. Uh, entities like there can be interference 
Um, and that kind of like wigged me out a bit, but I, I accept it to be true. I, my phone is on 20%. Yeah, using a pendulum, I was like, yeah, I've only done it if, here and there. But when I'm really struggling to make a decision or when I'm like really conflicted about something, I really dig using a pendulum and like really tuning in and being like, okay, I'm um, only that which serves the light. Um, like come through right now or like connecting to my higher self like please yeah help me like by speaking through this pendulum but yeah basically as you can tell it's not something I do much it's not something I'm versed in but I think it's a cool tool <sighs> monkey brain yeah I have a, definitely have a monkey brain we all experience the monkey brain and like pacifying and um nourishing the monkey brain is really important and like yeah, grounding the monkey brain. So like I said, I'd really love to do some Qigong on live together sometime to really um, just share that tool with you guys that like sometimes when you are experiencing that that activated state of like, oh, I'm really anxious. I'm really like, I'm really stimulated. Like there's, there's other ways to look at feeling anxious. Like I'm activated. Like my, I'm perceiving a threat right now. And actually something I wanted to mention was that some of what's arising at the moment during isolation with um, I'm going to stop reading your things for a second. Um, some of what's going to be arising in regards to like anxiety and depression at the moment is going to be unresolved stuff. That's just saying, Hey, we've got time. We've got space. We've got safety. Let's sort that stuff out. Um, and then, you know, the other part of what's going to be coming up is the nervous system activating because it's perceiving a threat. And sometimes a threat is simply, is simply just the fact that um, there's a disruption to what is usually like to what is normal for us, what's constant, what's predictable. Life is not constant and predictable right now, you know, in the way that it was six weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, really focusing on eating, drinking and living in a way that keeps the nervous system nourished and pacified and grounded um, and making sure you establish routine and you and you create anchors for yourself. So that there is predictability, there is consistency, there is security, because we all need that. Um, if you think about a child, what like a child, what a newborn needs, it needs to be able to rely on its caretakers. It needs to know, um, it needs to know that it's going to be safe, it's going to be fed, it's going to be nourished, it's going to be cared for, it's going to be loved. Um, I don't think that need ever goes away, and I guess as an adult you know, you may no longer have a caretaker as such, but you, you need to learn how to become your own caretaker. Um, so yeah, I'm really finding that the nervous system is like really begging for me to pay attention to it. That's another way that I look at anxiety. It's like, okay, my heart's racing. I'm like, I feel like there's like this internal momentum and I'm just sitting still or I'm lying in bed. Like, why am I like, why is there so much happening on the inside right now? Something needs attention. And if you look at it like a child that needs soothing, like a newborn that just needs to feel held and secure, how can you feel held and secure in your life as an adult? Like, what can you offer yourself? Um, so again, like I mentioned, you know, at the start of each week, I'll write a list of like, what are my tools? What are my resources? What are the things that help me make, help make me feel like I'm moving forward? Um, what helps me feel grounded and, and loved and nourished and whole and present and all the good stuff that I want to feel. And I, <clears throat> each day I refer to that list. Um, I'm just seeing all your sunflowers and love hearts right now. And it's gorgeous. Um, and I make a tally. So at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, what, what was I able to do for myself today? I, I meditated. I took a salt bath. I played music. Um, I watched a masterclass. I read a little bit. I took a walk. I listened to a podcast, I called a friend, you know, it's not going to be that many things in a day, but it's like, hey, here's the list uh, of the good stuff, and i um, referring back to that, and I have no idea how we got to this point, I have no idea where that thread of thought started, thanks for hanging, thanks for all the bees and the sunflowers, they're gorgeous, and all the yellow hearts, thank you. Barney, you said I have you 
I'll just read it as you said it. You say you have post anxiety. Do you also get FOMO for missing out what's posted online? What I find is that like on the days that I like keep going back and scrolling and checking what everybody's up to and like I'm, I notice that I'm actually just looking for um, stimulation. I'm looking for inspiration. I'm looking for something to excite me. I'm looking for like essentially a hit of dopamine. And I just notice that the more I go on, the, the less I get that. The more I, I feel like, oh, this didn't give me what I was looking for. What was I really looking for? I was just really looking to feel connected, um, excited, inspired. It's like, you know what? There's a good chance that you're not going to feel that when you go on Instagram. Um, so um, on my account here, my new reality account, I, I follow 20 accounts, I think. And they're just only educational, inspirational accounts. Um, and even that, sometimes I'm like, I'm not, I'm not feeling it today. Um, yeah, I, I, I find that like Instagram in general can contribute to, to me not feeling so good. Um, so I, I try to use it as a choice, not a, as an addictive like tendency. Um, anyway, once again, I don't really know how I got here. You said to have FOMO of, of worrying about like, what is everybody posting? More often than not, like if I go a few days without checking my, um, yeah, my account, I just go, oh, oh, I didn't really miss anything. I was just present. I was just here. I was just doing me. I was just like looking after myself and I kind of, that's my preferred life. Um, what kind of salts I use for my bath is Epsom salts. I actually, you know, when, I don't know where you guys are watching from, but at Coles and Woolworths in Australia, it's like $7 for a kilo of salt, you know? Um, whereas if you go on Amazon or eBay, I think I get it from eBay. It's like a 20, 20 or 25 kilo bag of Epsom salts. And I just keep it next to the bath and, um, put two cups in there and a couple of essential oils. And, um, yeah, I just find that really, really good for like my body pain, for my muscle, for my muscles in general. And also, yeah, it's, um, I don't fully understand how it works, but, um, using the salts, is like cleansing for the energy body. So whenever, you know, in the same way that you would use sage or Palo Santo to cleanse the energy field, um, Epsom salts really do that for you as well. So that, that really soothes my anxiety. It soothes my body pain. It like kind of grounds me. It feels so good to be like in, in body, in, in water, engulfed, embraced. I'm just going to scroll back a little bit. Um, thanks for asking what my favorite quote from the last book I've read. Okay. So, I mean, women who remember the wolves is the last book I finished and I'm, I'd be happy to read you guys more. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to read you more quotes from it. I've got tons. So if you want me to do that, let me know. Um, I'm also reading this book, which is such a lol. Um, wait, where is it? The highly sensitive person. Me. I can read you something from this. I haven't really got too deep into it. Um, but hey, this is referring to the um, inner child. Um, the infant body wants to play, and play creates endorphins and all the other good changes that undo stress. If you are depressed, overly emotional in other ways, not sleeping or showing other signs of being out of balance, force yourself to plan more play. How epic. Play more. Return to the child, um, inner self, you know, inner child talk, conversation with, with the inner child. What do you need? What, what did you love doing? What do you miss doing? Like now that we, we grew up a little bit. Um, the infant body rebels under all this pressure, signaling its distress. In response, we find ways to toughen it or to medicate it into silence. So the chronic stress-related symptoms arise. Yeah, I guess the more you suppress something, the more chronic it becomes. So yeah, that was the highly sensitive person. I'll just hold it up for a little while for you guys. It's cool, you know, like I was really struggling to read it at first and I was like, oh, I really need to like persevere into this because I kind of, I knew there would be information in it that would be, um, yeah, like nourishing and, um, informative for me. 
but it was like really hard to read, which I kind of felt like was a sign that I needed to do it more. Lean into like what you find challenging, lean into what you've experienced resistance with. Like the more resistance is, the more necessity there is most likely for you to explore it. Um, yeah, it's, again, like this is a really validating book of like, um, yeah, not necessarily feeling understood as you were growing up and like feeling quite sensitive in, in social settings or in like highly stimulating environments. And it's just, it's just really nice to understand like stress in a different way and how it affects different um, bodies. It is hard work being an HSP. Oh, I've... Um, okay, this is kind of cool. The infant self and the body itself cannot use words to explain their troubles. They can only give louder and louder signals for help or develop a symptom so serious that it cannot be ignored. The wise caretaker knows that much woe is avoided by responding to the infant and body at the first signs of distress. So not letting things get to that chronic state where they absolutely demand your attention and they basically like they restrict and paralyze your life to a, an extent where you are then forced. It's kind of like, yeah, just tuning in and um, allowing that inner voice to speak every day, you know, for instance, by, um, by journaling each day and just letting the, yeah, letting the infant self or the body itself speak. Um, yeah, being more aware of those messages. So, all right, I might, I might draw a card and then draw a close to this live stream. It's been lovely. This has been really, really nice. Mara, the name of the background music, I can't believe you can hear it, is the butterfly effect, elevate your vibration. It's on YouTube. Um... Mm, Barney, I don't do online courses. I just um, follow what like excites me. If something makes me feel curious, if it like, if it, um, yeah, basically if my curiosity, I'm on 10% now. Yeah, if my curiosity is activated, I'm just like, huh, I wonder what's in that for me. Like, um, and I just kind of, you know, it might take a while for like a particular top or a, um, or a book to like find its way to me. But, oh, you guys are so funny. I'm gonna hold up that book one more time as the highly sensitive person. Um, I don't do, yeah, I haven't done any courses. Last year I actually really wanted to study and like start looking at getting qualified to potentially become a counselor um, and just learn some different healing modalities like EFT, which is the, it's called emotional freedom technique. Or, um, yeah, you might know it as like a tapping. I forget what the other names are for it, but I was like really interested in like learning a few different modalities and it just wasn't aligning. Like, um, you know, the site wouldn't open or like they weren't taking enrollments, just things like that. It wasn't leading, it wasn't um, lining up. I would like to study and become qualified as a, like some kind of practitioner one day, but I'm, I am accepting that that's not where I am right now and that's not where my energy is best going to be utilized and I really just want to make music <laughs> so <laughs> yeah just follow your curiosity all right <sighs> let's all just take a freaking breath I know I'm doing all the talking right now but we are we're hitting we're hitting some stuff right now so oh my god I'm gonna need to like ground the F out after this. We have really like dug into some topics. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. So um, we're gonna draw an oracle card from White Light. The White Light Oracle by Alana Fairchild. It's phenomenal. I'm just gonna show you some of the cards because um, the artwork's just like out of this world, right? So this is, So if you don't know much about oracle cards, um, you know, my basic understanding is that what you're doing is, is basically going into the receiving mode and um, inviting guidance. 
So you might be inviting a higher power to speak to you through the cards. You might be inviting your higher self, um, your angels, your guides, um, your ancestors. Anything that you particularly resonate with is something that um, yeah, can offer you guidance and direction, help you make you feel supported, un understood, validated, um, give you a sense of like direction. It can answer questions for you. Um, it's like a really special connective process. As I mentioned the other night, um, I take like at least two Oracle card decks with me on tour and I totally weigh down my, um, my backpack with that. But it's important to me, it, it offers, like, it kind of like, it opens that space for you to connect to self and connect to source. The live's going to go off again. We're going to do this nice and quick and then I'm going to say goodbye. So if you all want to send out a question or you want to send out your energy, we're just going to let the cards absorb that. And we're going to um, just take a couple of breaths, maybe close your eyes, maybe imagine yourself connecting to your higher self, your original self, your, your ultimate self, or connecting to your guides and angels and um, just really opening your heart to receiving support and guidance. So um, I'm going to do this as fast as I can. I'm going to, when you, when you're picking a card, it, it picks you. So you'll shuffle, you'll set an intention, you'll ask a question. Um, and the card might jump out while you're shuffling or it might just like really ask for your attention. So I just feel that this one wanted to be turned. What have we got? Oh goodness, I don't know how to pronounce this. Ob ob Obadir? Um, I'm really hoping that we'll have time to to read this. Um, if not, I'll just share it on my story. Maybe maybe we will. I'll just share this on my story for you so that um, we don't get all stressed about running out of time. But this message is for everybody that was here for that right now. So um, come back and I'll share I'll share the message that is for us for the 200 of us that are here right now sharing this moment. So I guess I'll just finish up by saying thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. It's so nice to see your names and to hear your messages and, and to read your questions and do my best to answer them. Um, I care about you guys so much. I hope that you continue to take care of yourselves and make that your ultimate priority right now. Um, get in tune with what you need. Um, what your body's asking for, what your higher self is telling you, what your inner self wants to express, what your child self is begging for. Give space for all of that. Create time and space for you. Um, create anchors. Um, create predictability. Um, yeah, make sure there's an element of consistency and security in your life right now while everything else is so uncertain. What can be certain? What can you create? What can you establish with integrity? that will be certain, um, that is nourishing for you. Um, yeah, I love you all so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for helping me heal my fear of, um, being, you know, transparent and, um, putting myself out there. Thanks for creating and like letting this be such a safe space for sharing and connecting. And, um, yeah, it's just my absolute pleasure. And, um, this is where I, this is where I feel like I'm of service and I'm actually doing something that matters and that means something. Um, and I hope that you find that place in your life too. So, um, yeah, all my love, all of it. Thank you. Um, I will let you guys know when, when I'll be doing another live and uh, I think I'll be doing some shared platforms with, with other friends out there who are uh, spreading a message and spreading education on, on, their, on their fields. So I love you and I, I hope you have a wonderful day or night. And um, thank you again. I will, I will um, read this to you guys on a story right after this. So take care, okay?